Researchers find that eliminating staff cross-traffic could have cut nursing home COVID-19 deaths by 44%, and CMS names first facilities to receive point-of-care COVID-19 tests. This and more, next. You're watching LTC News with Dane Henning. Welcome to CNA TV Long-Term Care News. I'm Dane Henning. Today is Wednesday, July 29th, 2020. To stay in the know of long-term care news, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thousands of deaths tied to U.S. nursing homes could have been prevented if operators would have slightly adjusted their staffing model, academic researchers assert in a new study. The scientists tracked smartphone usage among all the nation's nursing homes for six weeks after federal guidance restricting visitors was issued mid-March. They found that a statistically significant 7% of the 500,000 plus phones tracked pinged as a cross-traffic among facilities. Judy Chevalier, professor of finance and economics in the Yale School of Management on Friday, said that shutting down all of these cross connections could have led to a 44% decline in nursing home cases. The results provide significant evidence that paying nursing home employees to work at only one facility and otherwise limit, quote, cross traffic across homes would deliver a magnitude of benefits, said Chevalier and fellow researchers M. Keith Chen, professor of behavioral economics and strategy, and Elsa Long, both of the UCLA Anderson School of Management, in concluding study remarks. The research built on study findings from the CDC's examination of the first known U.S. outbreak of COVID-19. That investigation focused relatively narrowly on the Seattle area facilities, which were found to have shared staff who spread the virus asymptomatically. Since late February, the outbreak, roughly 40% of all U.S. COVID-19 deaths have been related to nursing homes. Nursing home coronavirus death estimates vary widely from about 40,000 to 60,000 or more and rising. The smartphone researchers used satellite imagery to outline the rooftops of all 15,400 nursing homes in the U.S. They then tracked phone signals from phone service providers, not cell towers. While some of the phones could have belonged to residents, the overwhelmingly majority are assumed to have not. A 15% to 30% sample of the cell phone traffic was more than enough to reliably sample results a person familiar with the study explained. The findings are seen as a positive for providers who aren't being blamed. The person rather pointed out that the findings could point to a very practical, though logistically expensive, but achievable way of decreasing COVID deaths in the U.S. In the long run, asking nursing homes to have their staff live on campus as much as possible may be the most cost-effective way to combat COVID-19. CMS has released the names of 636 nursing homes set to receive the first batch of COVID-19 point-of-care test devices. As the agency indicated earlier this month, these facilities are located in hotspots or those areas where the virus is spreading the most rapidly. A preponderance of this first grouping of facilities is in California, Florida, Texas, Alabama, Arizona, North Carolina, and South Carolina. CMS, which first disclosed the point-of-care testing program on July 14th, has prioritized more than 3,900 nursing homes to receive instruments and tests in the coming weeks, the agency said in a frequently asked questions sheet. Once these shipments are complete, HHS will continue to uh, continue a phased distribution of antigen testing supplies to nursing homes with a current CLIA certificate of waiver and based on updated epidemiological data. Each test takes about 20 minutes to perform. CMS said it is possible to run tests in an assembly line fashion to test 20 to 30 to samples per hour. A point of care or antigen test runs about $25. That compares to approximately $100 for a polymerase chain reaction or PCR test. This has been your long-term care news update. Everyone have a wonderful week and I'll see you on Wednesday.